This video is brought to you by Factor Meals. Summer is here. We've got places to go, things to do, people to see, which means we might not always have time to cook. With Factor, you can skip the trip to the grocery store, the prepping, and the cleaning, and instead have a tasty meal ready in two minutes. What I like about Factor is that it's flexible. You can choose from as few as six to as many as 18 meals per week, depending on your needs. And with over 30 chef prepared, dietitian approved weekly options, you've got plenty of choices. That also means their menu supports a variety of lifestyles. Today's lunch is roasted vegetable fusilli, which is a tasty vegetarian option with about 20 grams of protein. I put it in a bowl because I'm very fancy. Factor meals arrive pre-prepared and fresh, never frozen. Just heat, eat, and enjoy. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code FOOLISH50 for 50% off your first Factor box. Wow, 50%. Again, that's factor75.com, code FOOLISH50. There's a new pitch taking Major League Baseball by storm, and it's called... Uh, we're, we're still working on the name. Most people these days call this new pitch a sweeper, and if you don't have 20 minutes, I'll cut to the chase right now. A sweeper is a type of slider characterized by an emphasis on horizontal movement, often at the cost of velocity and vertical drop. Here's a traditional slider, here's a sweeper, and here's the overlay. The one veering to the left is the sweeper. There you have it, folks. Be sure to like, subscribe, maybe check out my Patreon while you're at it. Okay, the casuals are gone. Now I'm gonna tell you a deep, dark secret about the sweeper. It's not new at all. Dave Steeb was throwing one back in the previous millennium. They just didn't have a name for it yet. So why is Sweeper the newest piece of buzzy baseball lingo? Well, it involves a splitter Freddy Garcia threw in 2011, me trying to explain something called seam-shifted wake, and a whole lot of cameras for some reason. In 2008, a company called Sport Vision installed tracking cameras in all 30 MLB ballparks, causing a technological baseball revolution. The pitch tracking era had begun, and broadcasts could suddenly display both the location and velocity of every pitch in real time. This was a major improvement over the league's previous velocity measuring systems, which involved either inconsistent radar guns or timing a fastball's release alongside a speeding motorcycle. Bob Feller's wearing freaking church clothes! Sport Vision's pitch FX system could also spit out a spin rate, but that spin rate wasn't directly measured, rather guesstimated based on the pitch's velocity and movement. That guesstimation came under the assumption that all movement except gravity was the result of Magnus Force, which coincidentally is the name I came up with for my fake ID. Picture the beautiful backspin of a Spencer Strider four-seamer. The ball doesn't actually rise as gravitational forces are still pulling it down, but the backspin means it doesn't drop as much as it should, causing batters to swing under it. So even back in 2012, PitchFX could guesstimate that this fastball from Justin Verlander had a spin rate just over 2600 RPMs. In 2015, TrackMan's radar system brought StatCast to Major League Baseball, forever altering our baseball vocabulary. Hitters were suddenly talked about with regards to their exit velocities and launch angles. As for pitchers, the new buzz phrase was spin rate, because StatCast could directly measure the rotations of every pitch. Teams like the Astros jumped on this trend, acquiring elite spinners like Charlie Morton, Ryan Presley, and, well, Justin Verlander to fuel their machine. But there was a catch. Big spin didn't always equal big movement. Just ask Garrett Richards. He was throwing a fastball with just as much velocity and spin as Verlander, but Richards's was dropping five additional inches. It just didn't have the same carry. The concept at play here is spin efficiency, aka active spin. Verlander's heater was thrown with 100% spin efficiency, meaning all that spin was using the Magnus effect to give his fastball rise. Richards, however, had inefficient spin at just 48%. See, while a four-seamer with backspin or a 12-6 curveball with topspin are pitches that rely entirely on the Magnus effect, there's another type of spin called gyro spin. From the hitter's POV, gyrospin looks like the spiral of a football. 
Most pitches, in fact, are a mix of Magnus and Gyro, and some lean really heavily on the latter. Seattle's Logan Gilbert is currently throwing an 88 mile per hour gyroscopic slider with sharp downward break. In some ways, it's the antithesis of the big, slow sweeping slider we're seeing more and more of in today's MLB. So it's not just raw spin rate that matters, as that doesn't account for the direction of the spin. Unfortunately for StatCast, it could only guesstimate the direction of the spin based on the velocity, movement, and spin rate of each pitch. We wouldn't know what axes these pitches were actually spinning on until 2020, when StatCast's radar system was replaced with Hawkeye's camera-based tracking system. The most significant upgrade was the ability to properly measure spin direction. For the obvious Magnusy pitches, there wasn't any new information to glean. Tyler Glasnow's curveball was observed leaving the hand at 6.30 on a clock face, and the pitch continued to spin along those lines and produce corresponding movement. But for every Tyler Glasnow, there's a Kyle Hendricks, a soft tosser who has analysts scratching their heads asking, now why is this guy's stuff so effective? Kyle Hendricks' sinker was leaving the hand at 2 o'clock, but arriving at 12.45. The movement of the pitch simply didn't match the spin Hendricks was imparting on the baseball. He'd broken physics, or at least our understanding of it. Garrett Cole's inferred and observed spin axes were identical. They made sense, but Kyle Hendricks' sinker deviated by 35 degrees. Zach Granke's changeup wasn't playing by the rules either. It was as if these pitches had a mind of their own once in flight. And thus, the concept of seam-shifted wake was born. So Hawkeye was revealing some rule breakers. The spin that was being imparted out of the hand didn't quite match the movement that followed. This wasn't the first time a paradoxical pitch had been spotted. Back in 2011, Dr. Alan Nathan wrote about a Freddy Garcia splitter that was caught on Yes Network's broadcast. It was thrown with the grip and the spin of a two-seamer, but dove down glove side like a slider. Eight years later, Dr. Barton Smith conjured a crew at Utah State University to fire balls with perfect side spin, like twirling a basketball on one's fingertips. The idea being the ball would only move horizontally. All vertical movement would be uniformly handled by gravity alone. But there were inconsistencies. Despite being fired with identical horizontal spin, the uh, test subjects were demonstrating variable degrees of vertical movement, some positive and some negative. What was the culprit? The orientation of the seams themselves. A baseball is a fairly unique object in that it has raised seams on an otherwise smooth surface. You ever seen ducks on a pond? I'm not talking about bases loaded, I'm talking actual ducks on an actual pond. When a duck swims along with its little webbed feetsies, it disrupts the water particles and leaves a wake behind. A baseball seems do the same, disrupting the air particles around them. And that disruption causes variable movement despite identical spin axes and spin rates depending on how the baseball seams are oriented upon release. In November 2020, Smith, Nathan, and Harry Pavlidis of Pitch Info would publish their manifesto on the seam-shifted wake effect, a term coined by Dr. Smith's graduate student Andrew Smith, no relation, with Kyle Hendricks' sinker being used as a primary example. Driveline followed up with their own study of seam-shifted wake sinkers, finding that deviation from the spin axis was more important than velocity or horizontal break. Although sinkers were an early focus, the same logic could be applied to any pitch with the right amount of gyro. The seams on top of Pablo Lopez's disco ball changeup were kicking up a pretty nice wake for him, explaining the pitch's spin axis deviation in the process. But one organization was about to apply seam effects to a pitch that veers off to the glove side, rather than the arm side, and the canary in the coal mine was Blake Trinan. Trinan had always thrown a slider, and at times it was pretty darn effective, like when he had an ERA below 1 with Oakland in 2018. But he'd struggled in the season since and needed to make an adjustment, and the answer was a big sweeping slider. In 2020, Trinan's slider had 3 inches of horizontal break. In 2021, it had 13. 
There were sacrifices made to add those 10 extra inches. The pitch was thrown two miles per hour slower and didn't drop as much, but the trade-off was worth it. Hitters went from a 206 batting average versus the slider down to 074, the second lowest batting average against of any pitch in Major League Baseball that year. He achieved this by only slightly altering the grip, yet greatly altering the orientation of the seams. The new slider was playing with seam-shifted wake. Trinan wasn't alone. The horizontal movement on Walker Buehler's slider increased over the course of the season as well. The Dodgers couldn't get enough. Just look at the story of Evan Phillips, a 17th round draft pick who was released by the Orioles and DFA'd by the Rays in August of that year. He was already throwing that big sweeping slider. So, the Dodgers snapped him up and haven't looked back since. Phillips has the fourth best ERA of any reliever since joining LA. Of course, you can't claim the Dodgers invented this type of pitch. If you did, you'd be disregarding pitchers like Sergio Romo. Don't you dare disregard Sergio Romo. Not on my watch, bucko. But they did popularize this pitch heading into 2022, aka the year of the sweeper. Dan Ockhoin, then of Driveline, shared their in-house definition for what they called a sweeper. Unsurprisingly, the Dodgers were first in the league in usage rate, though the Astros were right up there with them. The uptick in sweepers meant that the average slider's horizontal movement was increasing year over year, all because a handful of pitchers were switching to big sweepers. The Dodgers continued to do their part, adding pitchers like Andrew Heaney and Yancey Almonte, getting them to throw a sweeper, and having their ERAs. Players from all over the league were following suit. Mitch Keller of the Pirates successfully transitioned away from his traditional slider to a sweeper between May and June of 2022. He described the initial learning process as discouraging, but he was able to step away, refocus, and ultimately master the sweeper. Like your first time throwing a sweeper, it didn't work. Yeah, it sucked. I mean, I never wanted to try it ever again. And then stepping away from it, like thought-wise, got away from it. And then uh, one day in throwing program again, just picking it up and just ripping it and see what happened. And like one of them went just like straight left. And I remember like Oscar was right behind me, our pitching coach, and he was like, dude, Kells, that's it. While Keller ditched the gyro slider, Drew Rasmussen of the Ray simply added a sweeper on top of his. Slider polygamists like Rasmussen create endless overlay possibilities. Even if you haven't been paying attention, you could probably intuit that the one with 9 extra inches of horizontal movement is called a sweeper. Rasmussen's sweeper also exhibits the telltale spin axis deviation we've seen in other seam-shifted wake pitches. I've been kind of messing around with it, either change up or obviously it's kind of getting popular now is just kind of the sweeper slider, the seam shift wake slider, trying and, you know, throws it. Um, is that something I want to go after? So I've been kind of messing around with that. Perhaps the best visualization of the seam shifted sweeper is Clay Holmes. Looking at his slider releases from 2021 and 2022, the most apparent difference is orientation of the seams. In 2021, his slider averaged 88 miles per hour and 3 inches of horizontal break. In 2022, he sacrificed three ticks for an additional foot of movement, a worthwhile trade to say the least. As Holmes went on to have a career year by pairing his seam-shifted wake sweeper with his seam-shifted wake sinker, deceiving batters with an effect known as spin mirroring. He wasn't the only Yankee either. Michael King was already throwing a sweeper back in 2021, but was able to add velocity without losing horizontal break in 2022. Hitters went from slugging 579 against his sweeping slider to just 204. Overall, hitters in MLB were about 20 points worse in average and on base, and 30 points worse in slugging against sweepers compared to standard sliders. But it wasn't because the sweeper was any better at missing bats. Gyro sliders, with their velocity and sharp vertical movement, have a higher swinging strike rate. But sweepers miss barrels, forcing weaker contact on average. King tossed 234 sweepers in 2022. And the furthest anyone hit it was a harmless 341-foot flyout by George Springer. It doesn't matter whether you call it a sweeper, a dodger slider, or even a whirly. The adage remains the same. A pitch isn't a pitch until you, Darvish throws one. It's even codified in the official MLB rulebook. 
Naturally, Darvish has always thrown a sweeper. He was averaging 17 inches of horizontal break on that bad boy way back in 2016. He's also explained that this style of breaking pitch has been prevalent in Japan's NPB for years. Darvish and Shohei Otani, come on, you thought I'd make it through a video without name dropping Shohei Otani, were even spotted comparing sweeper grips during 2023's World Baseball Classic, when Otani brought his sweeper to the big stage. Forty-two percent of households in Japan tuned into the World Baseball Classic Final versus the United States, despite the fact it took place at 8 a.m. on a Wednesday for them. The climax of the affair was, of course, Shohei Otani taking the mound as closer in the ninth, only to face his teammate Mike Trout with two outs. After pumping a few hundred-mile-per-hour fastballs to Trout, the count ran full. The Hollywood sicko who scripted this battle licked his chops. In what was possibly the most viewed baseball game ever, Otani unleashed the deciding pitch. He throws. Trout strikes out and swing. It was a sweeper, and one heck of a sweeper at that, thrown 87 miles per hour with 17 inches of sweep. On the 20 to 80 scale, it was rated as an 81. Should we really be surprised that Shohei Otani's sweeper was best in class and second best overall in 2022? He's already outdone himself this year too, throwing a brutal 85 mile per hour sweeper with over 20 inches of horizontal break to dispatch Julio Rodriguez. The cat is out of the bag, and the sweeper moniker is here to stay. It's even been covered in the New York Times, right next to articles about, really? I preferred the original. We haven't reached peak sweeper yet. This is only the first season it's been classified as its own separate pitch type according to StatCast, meaning we can now observe how the share of sweepers has rapidly grown over the past few years. That reclassification has come with some weird retconning. Sonny Gray's old slider is now called a sweeper, his old cutter a slider, and his new pitch a cutter. It's a lot to take in. Teams have turned to the sweeper because it's seen as teachable and easy to acquire. Every franchise wants to be like the Dodgers, a team that picked up a sweepy boy from the waiver wire and turned him into their closer. But do the Dodgers even want to be like the Dodgers? They used to lead the way, but now they're just middle of the pack in sweeper usage so far in 2023. And there are up-and-coming pitching prospects like Bobby Miller, Gavin Stone, Michael Grove, and Ryan Pepio throw traditional sliders instead. Sweepers have proven to be effective versus same-handed hitting, but ineffective versus opposite-handed hitting compared to standard sliders. And given that most hitters are right-handed, it makes more sense for a righty pitcher to learn the way of the sweep than a lefty. In fact, the only lefty named in this video so far is Andrew Heaney? Is that good? Because hitters are seeing more and more sweepers, they're also recognizing how to lay off it. League-wide, their swing decisions versus sweepers have improved. More swings in the zone, fewer chases outside of it. And while it may be easy to teach, a pitch with such pronounced movement is inherently difficult to command. It might look good on the Stuff Plus leaderboard, but no pitch can be effective without the ability to locate it. Some have also implied health concerns related to the pitch. Blake Trinan, Walker Bueller, and Drew Rasmussen are currently recovering from lengthy injuries, for example. Though, all pitchers suffer high rates of injury regardless of arsenal. So, the sweeper has its place in the game, but it also has its limits. It's trending upward now, thanks to the newly discovered seam-shifted wake effect, but it won't be trending upward forever. After all, at the end of the day, it's just a slider, son. I don't know. Go ask your mother. I threw a sweeper last night and it cost me three runs, so that pitch can fuck right off right now. <laughs> um. <laughs>